I finally did it. 999 Gimme Gold Coins. It only cost me a piece of my soul, but that's a small price to pay for true power in this game. I also caught a couple of Gimme Ghoul. Um, interesting results. So, this one just has two best IVs. Maybe we use it. The other ones don't have any guaranteed IVs, despite being just like an overworld static encounter. Interesting. Now, because money is the most precious resource in this game, and I have more experience candies I know what to do with, I guess we're just selecting this guy. I'm gonna safety save first, but yeah, let's, let's go and do it. Let's get that golden go. Uh, boom, items, boom, 999 gimme ghoul coins, use it. Okay, so we just get him to level 100, um, 125 large candies, man. It's been a while since I've played Pokemon Sword Shield. I thought it was only like 80. Oh, he probably has like a very jerk level group or something. So I'm going to drop that down to like 90 and we can just EXP candy or not EXP candy, rare candy, the rest. No, actually. Also, you need to level him up, not use the coins and then he'll evolve. And I guess he just steals all my money. That's cool. I, I guess it makes sense with the name. He's a, he's a ghost type. It's Gimme Gold Jesus. No, <laughs> this can't be real, dude. Like, I know it, but this this can't be real, dude. At least found a cool place to evolve, so let's do, like, another 10. And then level 93, and then the rest we can get to level 100. And now the boy is ready. Almost. So, and, and then I've done guides on this, on like, how to make competitive Pokemon and stuff. We're gonna have to buy some vitamins. We're gonna have to dip into our funds but the big thing is getting a modest mint and then we hyper train them only need to use three because we got our two ivs and one wasn't wasted in attack so that's nice all right and that leaves us with eevee training so let's go and max out the special attack of this pokemon okay so here's where things get weird and even though the game has been out for over a week no one really knows for sure what speed does in Terra raids so i want to save i want to test it with hit points and then i want to test it with max speed to see if there's any kind of difference because durability is good but moving faster is better ah uh, i did this backwards i should have done move set first because i'm going to be resetting for the EVs. So that means we have to remake the move set but the reason why we're doing this is because of our ability good as gold we can't be statist the, the opponent can't pull shenanigans on us, so we're pretty much free to set up, which is, the idea is you go Nasty Plot, you go Metal Sound, you make it to where they're super frail, you have a high base power move in Make It Rain or Steel Beam. I want to try to see if I get away with Make It Rain, and then you have Recover just in case you need to, like, heal up. So the idea behind hit points versus speed is that the way Terra Raids work is that it's all, like, separate 1v1s into a shared health pool, but it feels like to me, and my intuition is that more speed progresses your 1v1 faster, and it seems like that's happened in online terror raids and also just other terror raids in general. So we're going to see how that works. Also a little bit of like animation time and weirdness could get into this. But you want to set up three nasty plots, and then a metal sound, and then you just go and one-shot everything, and hopefully things get crazy. And you just survive. Uh, so yeah, we did everything, which means make it rain, and that should be a one-shot. Wow. That wasn't... What? Why did that do nothing? Okay, so I have failed multiple raids trying to figure out, like, the timings and all of that fun stuff, but I think we've got it dialed in. A little bit of experience on the Golden Go means we might have, like, the super crazy crack strategy at our fingertips. So I'm going to go and spam the metal sounds. Also, my experience tells me, after reviewing the footage, it really seems like speed matters in some kind of way. There's less downtime. There's less waiting if you have a higher speed on your Pokemon than the hit points. And I feel like there has to be, like, some kind of not cap, but, but like a break point where, yeah, the fast Pokemon in the game with a Choice Scarf, the animations can't even keep up with that much speed. But with a Pokemon like Golden Go that has 84 base speed, difference between max hit points max speed seems to matter. Like, I'm not waiting as long. Now, there were different moves. So I can't do a direct time comparison, but I was reviewing the footage. I looked at the tape. And now this is where it gets tricky, like you don't want to greed too much, so you start to take a lot of damage. Especially because if you're lowering special defense, the enemy is going to be putting in some damage as well. So, minus 3, plus, or minus 6, plus 2, is that enough 
for the Make It Rain to KO on a Life Orb into a pseudo legendary Pokemon. It doesn't. Okay, maybe Baxcalibur is just way too fat of a Pokemon or something. I, I don't know. Okay, so now we're going up against Pincurchin where the good as gold might really matter because of status, but man, like the strategy behind this is kind of iffy, so I'm going to just keep going for it, I guess. What do you mean I got paralyzed and I'm unable to move? So the secondary effects can still affect the gold, as, the good as gold. So you don't, you aren't affected by status. I thought you just mean like you couldn't get status, but that would be way too busted. I, I didn't care about this golden freak. Oh no, that's gonna proc shields while I'm trying to heal. He's burned the zing zap. Oh, the zing zap can still paralyze me. He's gonna proc shields unless I make it rain very fast. Does this finally just one shot? Do we get a successful? Okay, that looks better. Still like not hard winning, but we were kind of forced into that or else the raid is lost. However, this is a six star raid and we are just a few minutes in. Dying, getting real nasty plots. Actually, yeah, we we lost special attack from using the make it rain. So it's not like we lost too much. Oh my goodness, it's down to the wire. Eh. We got a bottle cap. We got a few other things. All right, all right. We actually got status to work and maybe the AI glitches out and is just programmed to only sleep us or like only prioritize status. Maybe that's gonna be really nice. So I'm thinking about going back and forth between the moves to maybe set it up. Also get damage optimization because if you go minus six plus two, that's actually less damage than minus four plus four. So maybe we don't have to worry about weird status things happening. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try to get to minus six plus six and see if we can one shot the Vaporeon. I think we're gonna be okay. Wait a second. Not enough to KO. Ah, I mean, I guess it's good, but this is still like not ideal. Eh, getting KO'd isn't like the end of the world there. We get reset. Our stats were gonna get like wiped anyways. I actually got KO'd and failed the raid because I did get greedy and like I didn't nasty plot again, but I didn't think we'd need to. Wait. Oh my gosh. Last frame, dude. So that went to full, actually. Um, that's a fat Vaporeon. I don't think Rass Vaporeon is going to do anything for us, but yo, crazy IVs. Okay, though, if we get crazy rewards, but that's not always going to happen, and that's not always going to be the luck, and then we didn't get any extra, like, money items or anything. Yeah, look at me complaining. It's like, oh, I didn't get two Comet Shards. Screw the ability patch. I, I can't sell that. It's too valuable to sell because I might need it one day. Oh, wow. They did a lot of damage there. Also, I guess someone else was lowering special defense. I wasn't paying attention. So like, you do have to pay attention because they just said, um, yeah, my, the special defense can't go any lower. Interesting. Come on. Oh, defense raising though, but that's bulk up on oh, the shields. Dang. So yeah, it's man. You still have to like pay a lot of attention. Steel Beam at all these stats, though. Okay, that's good. That's not as good, but we might get out of this. Super effective really helps. Oh, it didn't remove the negative effects between that hit. So we kind of got lucky there, too. Uh, If I cheer enough, maybe... Oh, if I cheer enough, then maybe that'll break and we can just do a sacrificial Steel Beam. All right, cool. Broken stance, steel beam. That just, should just be a quick GG. Two and a half minute raid. Could have been faster. And then overall, like three minutes, time skipping, getting there four-ish for these rewards is very ideal. If I wanted to find that like neutral raid that really cements this strategy. And bad rewards. Ah, oh, the six star raids, man. Like cursed sometimes. Yo, like, this has to work. It doesn't put up shields. Hit battle. Give me steel beam. Oh, it's so close. Nope. 
Man, and also the problem with Steel Beam is, like, if it goes to shields, the fight is over because you don't have the right damage to deal with that. I guess you can take out Recover, put in a Ghost-type move, and then, like, Terrastal Ghost to salvage it. I just saw someone say, like, oh, if you put on the Recover, then it makes it easier to get your setup going, and it works really well with Good as Gold, but you should just be cheering at that point. Um... Yeah, overall, my take is that this is not the one-shot, free, insta-win, six-star raid strategy that it was made out to be. It, like, you need a frail Pokemon, I guess in that case you can set it up and still get it. Super effectives are free, but that's kind of true of anything. And then if, it, if, if the shield goes up, no matter what, you're pretty much going to time and it doesn't even speed up that much. So it's experiences like this that make me dubious of when people are like, Nah, man, you gotta do this strat. This strat's the best. You gotta do this thing. You have to use Berserker. The Berserker strat is bad. It doesn't work if you don't have coordination or if you don't have multiple people. And that's a problem. So unless you have three sweaty friends that are all going to be like farming and finding each other's six-star raids to join as fast as possible and then you all bring the Berserker and instantly win, and even then, Berserker can still fail into certain raids, which is why I don't consider it a good strat. Same thing when people like, yo, but if you belly drum on the iron hands and you have the team buff it up, it's going to be fine. But if no one knows to do that, or if multiple people are trying to do multiple things, like what happens if there's a raid where someone brings a Coridon, there's two Berserker and an iron hands? It's just effed. You're, you're losing because too many people don't know how the game actually works because they heard some trash meme strategy on YouTube or Twitter. Now, I will give credit to Golden Go because it seems like when optimized, when well played, it is probably the best, most consistent 6-star raider, but it isn't like, oh, you just do this and win and it's super easy. Uh, the problem is if you pick Scarlet version you have Coridon, there's a lot of overlap on the super effective, so it's not like Coridon's going to be patching in any raids that would be easier with the Coridon on super effectives. Because, like, if you have Miradon, oh, water? That's resisted by steel so then you just go Miraidon and you just run it down on terrain and electric moves and even though you're not one-shotting you're still doing really well with the Miraidon into water five and six stars uh this since it overlaps a lot of super effective you still want to bring golden go though on the rock and ice and then just win but for neutral raids i feel like with the good as gold ability also maybe you want to go like half speed half hit points or if speed actually doesn't matter and it's all placebo effect go full hit points pokemon's durable enough to just kind of survive and stat up I also, I doubt the Steel Beam to a degree, because like Steel Beam might make a, a couple of raids like a one shot where there's just like a sliver of health, but even that Vaporeon raid, I don't think Steel Beam makes the difference there, but then like now you have to use PP ups on the Make It Rain so you, to make sure you have enough. And the reason why I'm picking Make It Rain over Steel Beam is because if your stats aren't nullified, then you just want to make it rain again. If your stats aren't nullified and then you steel beam again, you're just going to get KO'd, or maybe you got KO'd off the steel beam, so you lose all those nasty plots. It also makes the transition into Terra Shadow Ball better, and even though it drops your stats, eventually you're going to get KO'd, then you revive Terra Shadow Ball and you complete it like a normal 6-star raid with a little bit of extra time save potential. But then that just kind of goes to the videos I've been working on for the last couple of days where I was talking like, is it worth raiding? The overall rewards for raiding, god that's a tongue twister, aren't really that great for like if you need money to then do some EV training. And 6 star raid rewards don't really seem much better than 5 star for like the potential hassle and getting locked into a raid for like 6 minutes that might even fail. So yeah, if Golden Go was like the ultimate giga best perfect Pokemon to where every neutral 6 star raid is a one shot that you're clearing in three minutes, then maybe there's some viability there. So if Golden Go was the magical Pokemon where, yeah, single player, pretty much no matter what, neutral rage, you're beating them in three minutes, one shot, it's free. It isn't free, because again, again, shields could proc early before you're setting up. Uh, things can just go sideways, or you don't even have enough damage. And then the rewards aren't that crazy. So I think it's just about having as many level 100 competitively trained Pokemon to have super matchups into 5-star raids, and then some cheeky strategies for 6-star raids. And if you just happen across one, then it's optimal. But if you're just out there raiding with legendary Pokemon, with starters, with like a couple of ragtag good Pokemon, but not like perfect rainbow coverage, then it just doesn't seem worth it. And even on like pure hyper min-max optimization, it still might not be worth it. My verdict on Golden Go is good, though. It's worth having because you can now pretty much deal with any raid. And I guess, like, 5-star raids are pretty good because you can still set up and go for potential one-shots. 
but yeah it's not it's not magic there's it seems like there's no magic in this game for you know the hardest content in the game so hope you guys enjoy the video hope you have a nice day thank you very much for watching